Okay, so I've just summarized the well the basics over here, and then we'll try to do an example. Try to actually figure out how many intervals we need. Uh, trying to well integrate one over x from two to seven. Seven. So x one over x uh, from to seven. So basically we want to solve two seven one over x x which would be called well approximately exactly equal to log two over seven over two and that's one point seven over two approximately 1.257627627273 uh, something okay so we want to solve this using the trapezoidal rule and the simpson's rule with an error less than h less than five times 10 to the power of minus nine. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we can first look at the trapezoidal rule and the Hard part here is term. So we'll take a look at maximum this error can actually be. That is this F two of psi less than Seven of f twice differentiated of x, which this thing is equal to max again x to seven, and we can actually figure out the second derivative of one of x, which should be two over. Three. So the maximum value here is when the uh, denominator is the lowest, which is two. Then we have a conservative or pessimistic view of the error of this term. This is the worst case scenario. So this is uh, two over two, three, which is one. So you know that this f two times differentiated of zeta is less than a fourth, at least. Most probably it's it's even less than that, but this is the best we can do. This is the pessimistic approach. I mean, the optimistic approach would say that, oh, this is always zero, but that's unrealistic. That is really unrealistic. Okay. So for the error of total, get et h. And again, we want to figure out how many intervals we want. So h and n. B minus a. F data squared over 12. Okay, we already know this, so this error should be less than 7 minus 2, which is the interval, b minus a, by 1 to the 4, uh, okay. 
Android over 12. Five. Have that five over forty eight h squared to be less than this error over here. So five times ten to the power of nine. Okay. Or h or h squared squared should be less than forty eight times nine. Now we also know that in trapezoid rule, the length between each interval h s b minus a over m. B is 7, A is 2, and now we have a bound for H. So we can try to solve this. So we will get that. Again, H 5 over M plus 7 minus 2. So, uh, uh, Again. Okay, so h equals 5 over 2. You can go back to this. No, sorry, you can go back to this. Have that 5 squared for m squared should be less than 48 times minus 9. So we need intervals more than. 25 over 48 10 to the power of 9 then the square root of this and this means we pour it, no, seal it sealing, so you round up so doing this oops round equals down to the nearest integer. We've seen this before. So, no. <laughs> it basically means that we need more than the number we get here. And the numbers we get is m should be more than or equal to 22,822 subintervals in the trapezoidal method. Okay, so that's quite a lot of computations. So, skipping some details, and this because I mean, this is monkey work for trapezoidal. Trapezoidal and doing the same for Simpsons, we see that we need only. Uh, okay, so and after this, you can calculate the age. So for Simpsons, we will get. Take one, three. So that's a huge difference. Okay. Show you a quick example of this also. So, since we are lazy, we can just ask Wolfram Alpha if this is somewhat correct. Have you ever used 
Wolfram Alpha. Yes. So you can basically just tell it, integrate one of x from two to zero using Simpson's methods, or Simpson's rule with 113 intervals. And it works. It's uh, kind of amazing. Um, mm -hmm, and it gave us some error estimates here. And it seems to be correct. Uh, no, this is in the premium version. Though I've paid for it, so I'm not signed in here. But this is the non-premium version. So it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's stupidly genius. Uh, and then if I try to do the same with the trapezoid rule, here I've logged in and I've tried to use the pro computation time because you have an offer as long as you're a student. So it's actually yeah, it's less expensive. But you see computation time exceeded because this is just too many intervals. It just gives up. You don't have that much time and this is too much time. But you see it's also calculating the trapezoidal rule and you see the error is a lot more than the Simpsons rule. Okay, that was a quite like a side note. Okay, so what do we do with this? Now we have Simpsons rule and we have tra the trapezoidal rule. Is there a way to, well, rhetorical question, can we combine these two or can we build upon these two such that we get a better estimation of the integral? And the answer is yes, of course. And that is called uh, Romberg integration. And as a fun side note, uh, this Romberg, he was actually employed by NTNU or NTH, as it was called back in the day. Uh, and in 1949, I think, he uh, was part of the project to build this huge Van der Waal generator in the physics building, or the old physics building now, at uh, Glushagen. I think they used it to do some kind of quantum experiments. Or well, that was the intention anyway. I think since it's been built, nobody has ever used it. Which is kind of sad. They just have a room dedicated to a big Van der Waal generator. <laughs> Rubberg. So the, the idea behind this is that we start with the trapezoidal rule and then we try to negate the errors. Just increase the accuracy through expiration. Okay, awesome. Cancel the error terms. <laughs> like so. Okay, so how do we do this in practice? Well, we start with. Well, the trapezoidal rule. We 
which again a b this function dx trapezoidal f h plus b r t f h okay so here we have only the leading term of the error up here. So it can be proven that e of t of f h can be written on the form a1 squared plus a2 h power of 4 plus h3 h to the power of 6 und so weiter. And all of these a's or ai's, they are constants. To see, this is similar to what we have over here. So the a1 is b minus a f two times uh, differentiated of this uh, zeta divided by 12. That's our a1. And then it just says that there are constants for all of the other terms downwards. Okay, so how can we actually use this delimiter? Well, we take a look at the first one. So we have a b x x again the trapezoidal rule, uh, but this time two h. So a wider. Uh, steps to length. A1 2h power of 2 plus A2 h power of 4 plus 3 2h power of 6. That makes sense, I hope. So basically I've exchanged this h here for, well, 2h. Now we take a look at the regular one. Also, maybe we should have done this first. x, dx. Well, that will give us the estimate h plus uh, a1 squared plus a2 h power 4 plus 3 of 6. So what I want to do here is eliminate this one or the h squared. How do you do this? Well, if I take four of these, what do I end up with? Well, Four, four of these. I should, well, four of these, four of these, four of these, plus something, and plus something. So if I then take this minus this, so if I have four. A. B, x, dx, so that's this one, minus, well, a, x, dx, just basically, this one, and if we color, It's just two different ways of estimating the integral. Okay, so this give us four. Yep. Uh, 
h minus p of h, and then these two be this, this, this should cancel. Agree? Oh, yeah, this just, there should be a two here. Correct. Then we will have, I'll just continue on the line below. So this one will cancel, we'll have zero, A1, oops, A1, H2, minus 12, A2, H4, minus 60, A3. But what you have basically been able to do here is eliminate this term here. But again, we're doing more evaluations, so we get more information, so it kind of makes sense that this is a better approximation. Okay, but now we have too many of the integrals on this side. We have three of them, so we have to put it on the other side, and we end up with a b x d x equals four f h. Two H three plus, and I will just rename the constants here. B. So say I have B one H to the power of four. B two six. So on. So we see that the error has gone from big O two or big. Big O H to the power of two to big O H to the power of four. So this is the same error as Simpson's rule. Um, the funny thing is, this is actually a Simpson's rule. Also, they have actually constructed Simpson's rule from the trapezoidal rule using this Rumberg integration. So we can again. Continue in a similar fashion using uh, a top there. So if you again try, so this is actually Simpsons. So if you again try to prove this, a to b f x x equals Simpsons of f h. Plus B one four plus two six plus complex something. We can also solve this A B X D X S of F and two H B one H four plus B two two H power of six. And then I can guess I see I hope you say you see that we can actually do the same again to eliminate more and more and more terms. So in a similar fashion we get A to B X the X this time, 16 plus h minus h divided by this time, 15 minus 48. Hmm? Yes. 
don't forget this. Yes. I will say. So now we have something even better than uh, Jim's suspect. And again, you see, we can we can just continue this forever, and we will get a better and better estimate of our integral. Hmm. Start. Okay. So, what is the general rule here? Can we actually do this in a general form? Again. Answer is yes. And I'm trying to show you an implementation at the end. Okay, so we have starting with points and the number of interval and one this one and two this two three s four and last n And then the length will again be hk b minus a over nk. So what we do to begin with, call it r1, 0. So 0 here means the trapezoidal rule equals h1 over 2 f a B, well, it's basically minus A, 2, F, B, minus F, of B. And with R2, be with H2. Two H two. We have A F B minus two F A plus H two. Rewriting this, we get B minus A over 4, H2 now, F of A plus F of B, this again, as well. A plus A over 2. And we see here that we can actually reuse, we can reuse this R10. You see down here, B of R. Zero plus H one F A plus H two. And then we can continue in this fashion. So R three. 
more points can be expressed using R1 and R2. Zero. Off. R. Zero. Two. F. A. B. A plus three, three. So, or in the general form, form K zero. It's one half. Yes. Oh no, that's. Something that's not been erased. R one zero H K minus one. I plus one. K two. A plus I plus one K oh. yes in general. So I won't go into the details of actually, <laughs> uh, of actually, well, the called uh, deriving these. Just how you do it, and if you want to increase the order, like we did, going from um, going from uh, trapezoidal to Simpsons, it's going to be R K. One zero plus okay. minus K minus one zero over three. Yes. More generally, so this is going from Little to Simpsons. And I don't know the name of the higher orders ones. We call them just J. R A J minus one. R K oops K minus one minus R K minus one K minus one over four K minus one. In a general sense. So, as with the uh, polynomial interpolation, I think it was Newton one, we get this matrix going R one zero, R one zero, writer 
So this is all for the trapezoidal. So we can use these two to do R one of the Simpsons. R no three one and use these two to calculate R three. And the cool thing here is that you only need the function relations in this first column. If you create this first column using the trapezoidal rule, so that's using this, then you can increase your approximation using. Did that make sense? But this R is only going to be estimates. Yes? Mm. Uh, I don't know the name of it. Suppose it has a name, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a better method. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it has a name. I just don't have it in me. But how would we actually try to implement this? Okay, so what we're trying to integrate here is the sine of x. So that's a function. And we're trying to integrate it from zero to pi using six nodes. We try with five to begin with. So what we're doing then is well, just trying to calculate using the Rundberg, which is a function, which doesn't call itself. No, okay, so that's a different. So basically, you construct this matrix, which is down here with all the Rs. I just don't care about memory management, so I just say that it's n by n, because that makes uh, sense over here. Okay, so the starting number of in intervals is we only have one interval, m equals one. And then we know that the uh, step length is b minus a divided by m. Okay, that's fine. And the first one, r11, that's basically this. So that's the so r11 here is r10, because MATLAB starts at 1 always. So that's just the, yeah, so up there. Okay, and then we start doing the rest of them. So from k equals 2 to n, I just calculate the first column. Could have also put this inside here, but for some reason I haven't. So we need to um, halve the step length for each, for each new iteration. So that's just, well, 0 0.2 divided no, times all 1. And Calculate next one according to this. Well, yeah, one here. Okay, so then we have our first column. That's using this. And when we actually created our first column, we can calculate the higher order approximations using this. I forget something. No, I shouldn't. Okay. So, we can actually try to run this. And we see that we get, well, oh, 1.22. So, the, uh, uh, so the uh, analytical solution for this should be to try to go even deeper, so 20 levels. first. So this is the R matrix. So this is using a trapezoidal rule with, well, no point, well, one interval, two intervals, three, four, and five intervals. And this is with the Simpsons, 
and then some higher order and higher order and higher order to get a better and better approximation. Increasing this to say 10, and we should get right there, 20. Really neat way of, of doing it, but we're still missing one trick to, integ uh, to integrate in a good way, and that is the size of the intervals. So up until now, we only had fixed length of intervals, but as you said, uh, so with the ODE solver in MATLAB, they use a adaptive step length, which you can also do in while, while integrating, because there's no reason to have, well, do more function evaluations than necessary. That just eats away at CPU time. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do tomorrow, unless there are questions. Well, adaptive quadrature sounds fancy. And there we'll also talk about recursion, the function that calls itself. And neat. Um, okay, questions or 